Orders of the day. Number five, order M164, second reading of Bill 164, an act to amend the human rights code with respect to immigration status, genetic characteristics, police records, and social conditions. Madame de Rosier. He denies the member for Ottawa Vanier. Yes, Mr. President, Mr. Speaker, I uh, move a second reading of uh, Bill 164, an act to amend the human rights code with respect to immigration status, genetic characteristics, police records, and social condition. Madame de Rosier has moved second reading of Bill 164, an act to amend the human rights code with respect to immigration status, genetic characteristics, police records, and social conditions. Pursuant to Standing Order 98, the member has 12 minutes for her presentation. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To introduce this bill after the debate that we just had, because the bill that I'm proposing here is to amend the Human Rights uh, Code to ensure that we have the right human rights framework to prevent systemic discrimination and indeed uh, help us in alleviate some of the challenges that face kids today and their parents. So this human rights amendment aims to modernize the Human Rights Code to ensure that it responds adequately to new forms of discrimination. It's essential for a society to give itself a human rights framework to protect itself against emerging negative stereotyping. What we see in Quebec going on right now with Bill 62 is a perverse bill that targets specifically a population and reinforces prejudice. Instances of prejudice against immigration and against newcomers are pervasive also in a discourse south of the border. So in my view, we need a strong human rights framework, a human rights framework that is relevant to the current realities of discrimination today. So it is important in a democracy to have a human rights apparatus that ensure that it plays the protected roles that it's supposed to do. A human rights framework guards us against ourselves. It ensures that we are the, as good as we should be and that we do not uh, go down to using stereotype instead of good, fair, rational decision making. So currently, the, the, the Human Rights Code of Ontario has the following feature, and I think it's important to understand how human rights work uh, to understand the necessity of adding new grounds of discrimination, but understanding the limits of adding new grounds. So it certainly prohibits discrimination, but it also allows, and that's very important, that at times it's necessary to uh, make a characteristic relevant if, for example, we're trying to decide what is appropriate for uh, more or less employment and other aspects. So it does oblige accommodation up to the point of undue hardship. So what does that mean and why is uh, human rights uh, important to us in, in Ontario? First of all, because it allows people that are victims of discrimination to access a voice, to be able to find the words to describe the reality that they experience, the rejection they feel, the limitations of the potential they have to fully participate in society. But it also uh, habilitates the Human Rights Commission to educate all of us, to provide us with guidelines as to how we should behave in society. How do we actually prevent ourselves from uh, using stereotypes in the way in which we reach decisions? So over the years, we have good example of the way in which the Human Rights Commission has issued guidelines to employers, to landlords, and to civil society in general to deal with new issues, you know, transgenders, uh, to help us manage disability better, and so on and so forth. So the important thing is the Human Rights Code is an instrument that helps us call for what it is, call discrimination when we see it, but also it helps us get better and educate ourselves. So a proper democratic uh, infrastructure must constantly reflect to the new form of discrimination that are present and that exist. In my view, it's like investing in our democratic infrastructure to ensure that we have a human rights code that speaks directly to the new forms of discrimination. And if we don't do it, if we have a human rights code that is old fashioned, it's just the same thing as having bad roads. It does not allow us to function adequately in our society. So uh, I think if I, many people are critical 
of uh, the Human Rights Code, and they uh, see it as being maybe unnecessary. But in my view, it's crucial that we have in our fractured society a Human Rights Code that speaks fairly to the current realities. I worry that there are too many injustices that remain hidden and silenced, that some people are unable to exercise their rights, they are unable to participate in society because of discrimination. So without further ado, I think uh, I, I will speak to the four new grounds uh, that uh, the bill seeks to introduce and the importance that they have for current realities. So my point is this uh, bill actually speaks first to uh, genetic discrimination and uh, I will uh, invite later on, I will have my, uh, my colleagues speak more in detail about uh, genetic discrimination. Let me just uh, speak a little bit to what it means. Science has evolved since the uh, implementation of the Human Rights Code, and now we know that uh, uh, people are often encouraged to take a genetic test to determine whether they're carrying the gene of a disease. However, they are often told that if they do, they may be uh, prevented from having access to an insurance contract, or they may have to disclose it to a future employer. And we know that some people have been counseled against genetic counseling on the basis that maybe they are foregoing uh, possibilities of employment or coverage on insurance, uh, 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 insurance contract. This is wrong. Uh, it's wrong to, uh, for people to be f either forced to take a genetic test that they don't want to do or actually be penalized because indeed they have decided uh, to know what their conditions were. So this is a, an important piece to ensure that indeed we continue to support science but have the Human Rights Code speak to the way in which uh, uh, people are forced to make decisions today. The second round, ground of discrimination that I want to speak about is discrimination on the basis of social condition. In 2000, Justice Laforet, who was reviewing the human rights framework for uh, Canada, suggested the inclusion of social condition as being a ground of discrimination. That's 17 years ago. Manitoba, Northwest Territory, and Quebec all have social condition as a ground of discrimination in their human rights framework. Social condition is a disadvantage that comes from poverty, it, from homelessness, from, from the lack of education. In a way, and we know that people hold stereotypical view about poor people. We know that uh, many poor people are denied access to services or uh, entrance to malls because they look poor or because they are poor. Indeed, there's a, a case in, the, in the Ontario where a, a dentist uh, has someone come into uh, his or her office, and in that case it was a, his office, and the person actually was a social uh, assistance recipient. So there was no problem that the dentist was going to get paid for the services. But the dentist did not want to have that type of wow. people wow. in uh, his waiting room. That's the type of discrimination that I want to uh, uh, respond to. Discrimination this, that is based on class perception, discrimination that is uh, based on the perception that poor people do not deserve to have the same access to uh, services. So this is wrong and we have to deal with it. Indeed, I think it's a, important for a government that recognizes that more and more we view uh, a gap between the rich and the poor, and we need to address it. Certainly, we want to relieve poverty. This does not prevent us from relieving poverty, and we know that we've taken great steps, for example, uh, for ensuring that indeed we raise the minimum wage or that actually we have a, a, a good plan to alleviate child poverty. Nevertheless, some people are suffering right now. Some people who are poor, who are homeless, are denied services and are treated uh, badly. Uh, and we need, indeed, to have a human rights uh, condition that will resp respond effectively. Now, I think the, uh, what is interesting here is the Human Rights Commissioner does support the inclusion of social uh, condition as a ground of discrimination because they have done some surveys that identify that the type of stereotyping that exists in Ontario society against the poor is actually quite negative. People do hold negative stereotypes against poor people, and indeed, we should react right now 
to this to this emergen. The, the third ground I think is uh, that I uh, suggest is discrimination on the basis of immigration status. I know that uh, uh, my colleague, uh, the MPP from uh, Scarborough Aging Corps, will speak to that. I simply want to say there's an increasing number of people around the world that are stateless, that are ref refugee, and that come here, and we want to regularize their status, but it takes a long time. And in the, in the meantime, you have landlords that before they are offering uh, to uh, rent premises will demand whether the person is a refugee or whether the, what kind of immigration status they have. If it is relevant, it's appropriate to ask. When it's not relevant, it should not, should not be asked. And this bill speaks exactly to that issue. We need to have a conversation around Ontario about the fact that it's not always relevant to ask what is the immigration status of someone to offer them uh, accommodation, to offer them employment, or to offer them a contract or services. So finally, I, the, the last piece of discrimination, the last ground of discrimination that I've included in this bill is discrimination on the uh, basis of police records. There is a perverse uh, interpretation under the Human Rights Code that uh, prevents uh, uh, discrimination on the basis of uh, when uh, in employment when somebody has achieved a pardon. A pardon no longer exists in Canadian law because it has been changed between the record suspensions by the federal law. So just for that, we should change the, the act. But more importantly, I think we know that uh, people that are have not been charged, for example, or charges have been withdrawn are often uh, prevented from accessing employment because the police records is used to deny them employment. So uh, this, again, is an important aspect of ensuring that people are treated fairly. If it's irrelevant, if people have actually moved on and done great things, they should not be, be prevented from accessing services and accessing uh, employment. In conclusion, I just want to say how much human rights law is about creating the possibility of human beings wanting more than they had and being treated fairly. We want an equal society where everyone is treated fairly under the law, equally under the law. If we don't have the human rights framework to support that vision, we're going nowhere. So F.R. Scott, the great poet, said if, eventually that if um, uh, the, the state and uh, equality was a work of art. It should be an ongoing work of art. So I'm thinking that this is the brushes that will uh, allow us to actually design a better future, a more equal society. Merci beaucoup. Thank you.